Welcome friends, welcome viewers. Uh, this is Dr. Jaitley, your cardiologist uh, from New York on Munimeter Health, your favorite site and source of learning. So here we are again uh, looking at um, uh, in, a, in a very brief video where I wanted to talk to you about where in the kidney do the diuretics work? Now there are numerous kinds of diuretics obviously the question is for the residents fellows and colleagues uh, and my dear viewers because they must be so inquisitive each one of you are so inquisitive where do the diuretics work? Now here I've shown you a schematic quickly about uh, how a unit nephron we call it a nephron why because this is the diagram of your Every, uh, complete nephron it's not one cell but it's one unit so it's a functional unit of a kidney is called nephron one function and there are millions and billions and trillions of these in each of the two kidneys that we have so interestingly it begins with the glomerulus just quickly going over the anatomy here so that's where you understand that remember that these are present in in your uh, in your kidneys which are somewhere like that obviously the right kidney is slightly lower i'll show you and then this is your left kidney here okay so um, because the liver sort of uh, comes in here and therefore uh, positionally the right kidney is a little lower if you will uh, obviously there you have renal artery going in there and then you have renal veins coming out and then obviously you have uh, ureters coming out as well which are finally going to the bladder if you will okay so now each of these kidneys they contain one glomerulus along with these tubules so so there will be millions and billions of these structures and each of them is called a nephron or one functional unit of the kidney now it starts with a glomerulus where the, this is the ultra filter mechanism that we have in our nature uh, provided by nature to us and afferent arterial is bringing the toxin rich blood if you will high in how you high in urea high in uh, certain electrolytes high in other toxins and so this becomes an afferent arterial and that branches off into various capillaries within the glomerulus capsule it's called the Bowman's capsule and from there emanates the efferent arterial so that becomes the efferent if you will so let's write that efferent arterial, efferent venule, if you will. Now, efferent venule will eventually coil around and then um, um, the, the, the drain into the tributaries of the renal vein. Now, this becomes your renal vein as as it's draining into the renal vein. And renal vein is again bringing blood back into the into the um, into the right side of your heart. So that is obviously less toxin rich if you will or toxins have been removed in a way so now the glomerulus eventually it it uh, the urine is now as the blood is flowing through the capillaries the the urine is collecting now or the or the filtrate which is plasma and uh, the toxin uh, laden uh, plasma or urine or the fluid is now being filtered remember red blood cells and proteins are not filtered so automatically red blood cells and proteins will find its way directly here so that is the sieve if you will and rest is all being filtered here by the ultra filtration mechanism now provided by nature to us so now what happens is the glomerulus coils around into a into a convoluted and uh, into a convoluted pattern and we call it proximal convoluted tubule pattern pct now that drains into the descending limb of this is the descending limb of loop of henley this becomes the loop because it's looping around here so all of these functional neurons if you will nephrons not neuron nephrons will be will be lined up here and as a result you'll see uh, there will be an ascending lip, limb here so this is a descending limb and this is an ascending limb and as the urine is collected over a period of time there are constant exchanges occurring between the sodium the potassium the urine and the water and of course uh, uh, other salts so all of that extends out into the again it starts to coil here as you see the blue pattern that i've shown you and this becomes your distal convoluted tubule pattern and then finally the distal convoluted tubule will drain into the into the collecting ducts if you will i'll call it a ct collecting ducts and multiple multiple collecting ducts will eventually form to go on become calices uh, or, or ureteric calices we call it and these calices will eventually uh, drain into a ureter form so these will be your ureters 
So there'll be a right ureter and a left ureter. So you have a left side coming this way and these will eventually drain into the bladder. And this is how the urine is collected. So I'll write the urinary bladder here. So ureters are connected to the urinary bladder. So this is the microscopic way of looking every single nephron within this kidney here, the right kidney here and the left kidney here. Now, interestingly enough, how, where do the diuretics work? Coming to the subject here. So the diuretics will precisely work at various levels. One, they will work at the proximal convoluted tubule. Which brand will work there? It's a group of drugs called Dimox or Acetazolamide. So we'll call it carbonic acid, uh, um, uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. These are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, and the prototype is Dimox. Uh, so just remember that. So this works at the proximal convoluted tubule. Something works at the ascending lim limb of loop of Henle. Now that is very commonly used in in day-to-day -day life, and those are loop diuretics. So we call them loop diuretics obviously they're working at the sending loop of and the classic example is lasix or furesemide or or um, 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 bumetanamide which is bumex and then you have teretamide so these are the three groups of drugs which are the prototypes for the loop diuretic class so you have a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor which is the dimox as a prototype and loop diuretics you have lasix and bumex which are common and they are all available pure and iv this one is not available iv then you move on to the third group which is the proximal distal proximal or the early part of the distal convoluted tubule this part here so this is the place where thiazides will work so just remember that i can show it to you in a different color here so this way it just stands out so thiazides groups of drugs or hctz which is commonly used it's not available intravenously it's available only orally that works at the proximal end of the distal convoluted tubule and then very close to the collecting collecting tubules are right up in this region. What works is the spironolactone or the aldosterone antagonist groups. So these are the aldo, uh, uh, aldo, uh, aldo, you know, aldosterone antagonist and the classic example here is spironolactone or um, lactone or the other one is eprilinon, eprilinon which is more recent of the aldosterone antagonist. So there are four groups of diuretics which are working at different levels of the nephron. What are they? Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor working at the PCT level. Diuretics, the loop diuretics, they are working at the ascending limb of loop of Henle. The thiazide group of drugs, they are working at the proximal end of the DCT. And at the distal end, and at the distal end works the Amer uh, aldosterone antagonists. So these are the four groups of drugs which are, so number one, number two, loop diuretics, number three is thiazides, and number four is aldosterone antagonists. So this is an interesting way of looking at where do the diuretics work in the kidney, especially when you're applying that to the cardiovascular uh, system and understanding it a little better. So you know, in a nutshell, you've learned something about um, the kidney, the, the functional unit called the nephron, and uh, what is the anatomy, how does, uh, how does the urine collect and eventually form and then drain into the bladder here. And then, of course, you've learned the various, uh, um, the various components of the nephron per se and what are the functions. So remember, most of the sodium and water absorption is occurring in this part of the kidney. That means between proximal tubule to the loop of Henle area. And rest is all around in this area and the distal convoluted tubule. So remember, these, a these agents that work here will obviously have more impact in removing water or fluid if you were to use that in a setting of hypertension or heart or heart failure. And that's where the volume you know, um, depletion is desired. Okay, so uh, in a nutshell, you've learned uh, how the functional uh, nephron works and, of course, where all these four groups of diuretics work. So once again, I thank you for your attention. Stay tuned on Money Meter Health. More interesting stuff is coming down. And again, uh, thank you for watching and learning and sharing with your friends. And if you like this, uh, please do press the like button and we'll appreciate that. Do not forget to write your comments and your questions and suggestions. We'd like to make it a point to answer that also rather promptly. Thank Thanks again and so long and uh, Dr. Jaitley will see you again in the next uh, video.